The latest and last version of the preview of ASP.NET Core 3 is out. This is the last preview version because we are going to get the final release on September 23. In this video, we are going to see what's new on the preview 9 and also we are going to update our application or Blazor application so that it supports preview 9. First, what's new? There is not much new going on here regarding to Blazor. Most of the things are renaming stuff like Ayora Helper that is now called Navigation Manager and organizing a few stuff on new namespaces. But there were at least two major improvements. The first one being some Blazor routing improvements in which we can now have the not found content render information on a specific layout. And besides that, there is a new unit test framework for Razor components. This framework works by loading up the components in memory and allowing you to interact with it using C-sharp code. So for example, you will be able to load a component, verify its state, see if it has a button, click on that button, and see what happens. All of this you are going to be able to do it through c -sharp code in order to verify the behavior of your Razor components. But we are going to see that in a later video. For now let's concentrate on installing the new preview 9 of .NET Core 3 and updating our application. For that you can come down here and you can open this link and you will be taken to the latest version of .NET Core 3. You download and install that and then after that if you are using Visual Studio Preview, you will have to update it to the latest preview version. In my case, when I updated Visual Studio, it automatically installed .NET Core 3 Preview 9. Besides that, the final step is to run this command on the command line in order to install the latest templates of Blazor. And with all that said, you are ready to update our application. In order to update an application, you have to follow this series of steps. Here they list all the changes related to Blazor. The first one of course is to change the reference of the packages to Preview 9. So for that we are going to go to Visual Studio. This is the CRUD application that we have been building throughout this course. I am going to right click on this project and select edit project file. I am going to look for this reference here. I am going to press Ctrl H so that I can do a quick replacement and I will choose the entire solution and I will hit replace all. I'm going to say yes and now all the reference has been updated to preview 9. Now let's close this and let's see what's the next step to update our application. Here they say that we have to use that using a statement on our top level imports file so we can do that. Let's go back here, let's go to the client file, let's go to the client project, let's go to imports and let's just add this using a statement here. This is really important because in an application that I'm building, by not using this using a statement, I was getting this weird error in which the onClick handler was not working correctly. So putting that here fixes the issue. Now let's go back here and we can see that we have to install Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Component.Authorization if we are using a WebAssembly app. Now if we go back to Visual Studio, to the project file, we are just going to paste this here, we are going to duplicate this line and let's just change this name to the components.authorization package. And with this you should be able to compile your application and have the package installed. Now let's continue with our update. Something else they did update is that now the IJS runtime does not return a task of T but now it returns a value task of t. The difference between a task and a value task is that a task is a reference type and a value task is a value type. So as you can see here, we have to update any method that uses IJS runtime so that now it returns value task of t. But in our case, we don't have any of those methods, so we are fine. Something that we have to do is to replace every instance of IURI helper with navigation manager. So for that we're going to go back here, we're going to press Ctrl H, IURI helper, navigation manager, let's replace all, let's press yes, and two occurrences has been replaced. Besides that, as we were saying, 
the routing component received a major update, so we have to go to the app razor component and we're going to see that this doesn't work anymore. We have to go back here and we have to go down below here and we're going to see this code. This code lays out the new template for the router component. Now we have a found component which indicates what is going to happen when the component route is found and what is going to happen when a matching component for a given route is not found. So let's copy this and let's paste that here and that's pretty much it with respect to the router component. Now let's compile our application and we're going to see that the build has succeeded. Of course, because this is a small application, we barely had to do anything. But if we go back here and we go to the instructions, you are going to see some other things that are really important. For example, if you have been using reference to components, you have to remove the use of suppress field. This was necessary in preview 8, but now you need to remove it on preview 9. Optionally, you can remove the extra imports razor file that only listed the layout. For example, they are talking about this imports file that is here. They are not talking about the top level import files that is this one, the one that has all the using statements. No, they are talking about this one that only lists the layout. Because now in the app razor, we are defining the layout at the router level. We really don't need these import files anymore, so we can delete it. So let's just do that. And that's it, we are ready to run our application. Let's press Ctrl F5 just to verify that everything works. We have our application here. Everything seems to be working, navigation is fine. Our people component is fine. And if we go to a route that doesn't exist, the reason we are getting this blank page without our layout is because back at our razor file, we are only defining the layout in the found scenario, but in the not found scenario, we are just saying display this message on a screen. If we want to use a layout in the not found component, we need to use a special component called layout view in which we can define the layout that we are going to use. So we are going to say then layout view and we are going to put our layout component around our message. And now we're going to say layout type of main layout. And with this, we should be able to compile our application. We can go back to Google Chrome. We can refresh this page. And now we're going to get our message, page not found, but inside our main layout. So all this means is that now you can use a specific layout for when a component to render is found, which can be different to the layout that you're going to use if no component has been found. You only need to use the layout view component in order to define what layout to use. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want me to cover next. Thanks.